Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled The Surangama Sutra, 25 Means to Enlightenment, Session 6, Part 7 of 7, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on April 8, 2019, in Xiu, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. of the master with all this experience method even sometimes bring immediate transcendental experience but it's not the normal means of practice uh, even spoken for those of shallow and deep roots alike even for those who are already been practicing many lifetime or some beginners alike uh, these experience method are not suitable not for everyone even with the one with deep, enlightening, uh, yearning root already within them, with deep practicing since many lifetime already, even for them, is still not suitable without the Buddha's blessing. <laughs> even with the Buddha blessing, you see, Ananda didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, the two medicine men immediately get enlightening uh, experience. Uh, the uh, other monks just hear Buddha's voice and then get enlightening. Ananda has been with him, hear his voice every day for years, get nothing. Ananda has been with Buddha for a long time, get nothing. That's why Buddha wants him to be enlightened, to protect him from another seduction somewhere again, because he was very good looking. Yeah, I read somewhere that Buddha forbid him to let his uh, shoulder exposed. Normally, the monk at that time, they have only a blanket, they cover like that, and one shoulder exposed. And when they want to talk to the Buddha, they also expose one shoulder to show respect, custom. Even then, Buddha forbid Ananda <laughs> to expose anything, <laughs> even just a shoulder. How can you feel enticed <laughs> and seduced by a man's shoulder? That I don't understand. But the Buddha must know. He has 500. Uh, beautiful woman with him. But the Buddha doesn't know. He was a prince and all his concubines. He don't even need to expose even his nose. They all run after him already. <laughs> because his surname is Prince and Crown Prince even. And everybody won that position, wife of the Crown Prince. So he doesn't need to even expose shoulder, even a nose, he don't need. Ear also don't need. He cover from head to toe, they still run for him. Now maybe he knows all that. Maybe Ananda is exceptionally handsome. Hmm. A shoulder even cannot be exposed. <laughs> and even then, the, the Matanchi daughters still run for him. Yeah? Practice this mantra just for him, just to seduce him. The best, the most powerful one that no man can escape. <laughs> If you want to get a man, this is a very low quality, low dignity method. If you have to resource to a mantra to charm a man, then oh, I would feel very embarrassed, yeah? shame, guilty. Even if you get him, you will never feel you are loved. Even if he show all the love to you, you would think, oh, it's a special effect. <laughs> <laughs> leftover power from the mantra. You know he didn't love you. you. You chase him, you trap him, you tricked him. In your heart you never feel satisfied yeah, as a beloved woman. Yeah. So useless, yeah? But this is the thing. This is a drama that unfolds is it, for the Buddha and uh, his uh, monk. Yeah? So that Ananda become more enlightened, more careful and more humble. And so that this Beautiful woman also can become enlightened. She became a heart, no? After, yeah? Mm. So they both have something. <laughs> something uh, with each other to give and take, to pay and to do something, you know, play this drama. So Manjushri continue speaking. I bow to the ones, the first come one, 
Here he say one skamthas. It's the same. Yeah. And the Tripitaka, the holy three. And to those inconceivable ones with no outflows, or the saints and sages with no more defects. Trusting they will aid those in the future so that no one will doubt this Dharma door. No one will doubt this method. It is an expedient easy to master. Is it easy for you or not easy? Yes. Quanin yes. method easy or not? Yes or no? Yes. An appropriate teaching for Ananda as well. Mm-hmm. It's easy to master for Ananda also. And for those immersed in the final age, I mean, after the Buddha Nirvana, of, they, he say 500 years ago is the Dharma ending age, for his Dharma age, yeah. They should cultivate this organ of hearing. But actually also in our time, you know, some years of our time since we were born until recent years, they call it Kali Yuga, means the Dharma ending age. Actually also not just the Buddha's Dharma ending, but Kali Yuga age, mean Dharma ending age. Yeah? So we are lucky still have method to practice. We have to thank all the saints, the saints that protect and preserve the lineage of Kuan Yin method up to date. We really are grateful. Because the, the lineage don't always run in one direction or in one place, like the river, you know, it run under somewhere and then it emerged somewhere else and then it hidden again underground, depends, yeah? And then it come out again, yeah? So if we sometimes keep looking in the same tradition, we might miss the mark. I'm glad you did not miss the mark. I'm glad you are wise enough to look wide and far. <laughs> uh, he said that for those immersed in the final age, they should cultivate this organ of hearing, you know, I mean the true hearing, a perfect penetration that surpasses all others. It is the way to the true body. The true mind is a true mind, but I'm worried you mess up with your mind, so I say the true body, yeah, true mind. The true mind means the true self, huh? the true enlightening, the true thinking, the really true wisdom of all. Thereupon, Ananda and all in the great assembly experienced a clarity of body and mind. Having attained such profound instruction, they contemplated the Buddha's body and Parinivana like someone who, having traveled far on business, knows that he is on the road home, though he has not returned completely. Throughout the entire assembly, the god, dragons, and all the eightfold division, all different kind of divas and demons and human beings, those of the two vehicles who were not yet beyond learning, as well as all the bodhisattvas of initial resolve, as numerous as the sands in the ten Ganges rivers. You must know there are invisible bodhisattva and beings as well. That's why it is as numerous as the sands in the ten Ganges river. It's not like the Buddha ashram can contain all this physical <laughs> bodhisattva, okay? Because his ashram, I think, it cannot be bigger than mine here, okay? found their fundamental mind and far removed from dust and defilement attained the purity of the Dharma eye. Probably they, at that time everyone see the light then. Huh? See the light. No. The bhikshuni named nature attained a hardship after hearing this verse. Only hearing that she attained a hardship. And limitless being brought forth a matchless, unequaled Resolved for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, meaning one to become enlightened as Buddha. Yeah. Ananda straightened his robe and then bowed in the midst of the assembly and placed his palms together. The tracks of his mind were perfectly clear, and he felt a mixture of joy and sorrow. 
His intent was to benefit beings in the future as he made obeisance and said to the Buddha, Greatly compassionate, world-honored one, I have already awakened and received this teaching for becoming a Buddha, I mean Kuan Yin Method just now, and I can cultivate it without the slightest doubt. I have often heard the thirst come one say, Save others first, then save yourself. That is the aspiration of a bodhisattva. Once your own enlightenment is perfect, then you can enlighten others. That is the way the thirst come one responds to the world. Although I am not yet saved, I vow to save all living beings in the Dharma and in age, etc. And then he asked the Buddha how, we see, last time, were well, honor one, those living beings will gradually drift away from the Buddha, and there will be as many deviant teachers propounding their methods as there are sands in the Ganges. I want to enable those beings to collect their thoughts and enter samadhi. How can I cause them to reside peacefully in Bodhimanda, far from the exploit of demons, and be irreversible in their resolve for Bodhi? Okay? And then the Buddha say, you know, the Buddha will tell us how to uh, be uh, pure, remember? The five precepts from then on, yeah? Last time we read already, yeah? I'm not sure if I read all that. Yeah, he did, no? He said, at that time, the world honor one praised Ananda in front of the whole assembly, saying, good indeed, how good it is that you have asked how to establish Bodhimanda and to rescue and protect living beings who are sunk in the morass of the final age. Listen well now, and I will tell you. And then I read all that, remember? You have to cut away lust and killing thought and all that. Yeah, we read that already, huh? Yeah, so okay then. Up until uh, Bhikshu who do not wear silk, who do not wear leather boots, furs or down, etc., and not consume milk, cream or butter, yeah, can truly transcend this world. But must practice also Kuan Yin Method. That's what he meant. Because it's better that way. Because Ananda, you see, even though he became a monk already, he didn't wear silk, he didn't wear leather boots. For sure, if the Buddha already uh, instructed this rule in the ashram, he wouldn't wear it. But he still wasn't enlightened. Buddha need to teach him Kuan Yin Method. And all the other Bishuni and Bishu also need to learn Kuan Yin Method. So Kuan Yin Method is awesome. Good, huh? Yeah. Okay, thank you. But you remember, the Buddha also taught us that to make a body manda, I mean the, uh, a pure place for contemplation, you have to sit 100 days without eating, without sleeping, without drinking even. Maybe you can accomplish that, okay, with a firm faith in the Buddha and with a pure master who transmitted to you this pure method, okay, or helping with the body manda in purity. Otherwise, he say it's useless and recite this endless mantra that I skip. I did not read it to you because it's translated from Sanskrit, phonetized from Sanskrit. So I wasn't sure whether or not it's useful. It could be useful, but I don't know if you have time to read it. <laughs> All right, today our calendar ends here. Maybe see you next time. Yeah. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Ciao! Beautiful people! 
I like it also. It helps when, when I speak with the assembly who are more enlightened, so we are more in the same frequency. There's no rubbing anywhere, no friction. But I love you all no matter what, okay? <laughs>